My name is Frances, a 39-year-old woman, and there was Harris, a 45-year-old man. Together, we formed an unbeatable pair, conquering our studies, sharing late-night stromboli at 3 a.m., and, inevitably, falling deeply in love. Those college days were filled with the kind of love stories you've probably heard a thousand times before, where late-night study sessions slowly morph into something much more. We were completely smitten with each other. Harris was everything I could have ever wanted in a partner. He always made me feel cherished, constantly expressing his love for me. But here's where the plot thickens. While I was ready to dive headfirst into a future together, Harris seemed to be stuck in place, hesitating at the idea of marriage or even introducing me to his family. It was as if he was metaphorically cemented to the ground, avoiding any conversation about our future. Fed up with his evasion, I finally confronted him. We found ourselves in an intense argument where I accused him of keeping secrets from me, secrets that felt like they were tearing us apart. The confrontation escalated quickly, highlighting the tension that had been building between us. On a seemingly ordinary day, with us sitting in our cozy living room and sipping tea, I decided to address the elephant in the room. I asked Harris why he was so hesitant about moving forward with our relationship, especially regarding marriage and meeting his family. After some initial resistance and dodging the question, Harris finally admitted that he was keeping a significant secret from me. His parents were unaware that he was in a relationship with a Canadian woman. This revelation left me stunned and full of questions. How long had Harris planned to keep this from me? What did this mean for our future? The conversation that day marked a turning point in our relationship, unveiling truths that would challenge our path forward. Harris looked at me, his eyes filled with a mix of regret and concern. Francis, I know it's not right, and it's certainly not fair to you. My family has these deep-rooted cultural expectations. They imagine me marrying someone from our background, someone of Arab descent. They're unaware of my love for you, a black woman. It's been four years, and they still don't know about us. I was stunned. Four years, and they have no clue who I am? I was 27 when we started dating, Harris. This feels so wrong. I'm truly sorry, he continued. They have strict views, and frankly, some of their attitudes are downright prejudiced. I've been so scared to confront them about us. So, you've been keeping us a secret? Because you're worried about their reaction? Harris, you're supposed to stand by me, even against your parents' prejudices. I never wanted to hurt you, Francis. I love you deeply, and I couldn't bear the thought of putting you in such a difficult position. Hearing Harris's words, I felt a whirlwind of emotions. I love you too, Harris, but this changes a lot. Marrying into a family with such rigid beliefs. I'm not sure if I'm up for that. Francis, please. Harris pleaded. Don't give up on us. I'll talk to my parents. I'll do whatever it takes. I can't lose you. I need some time, Harris. I need to think about all of this, to decide if I can deal with these cultural differences and if I can ever trust you again after you've kept such a significant part of your life hidden from me. I understand, he said softly. I should have been honest with you from the beginning. I'll give you the space you need. But just know, I'm ready to fight for our relationship. I was torn. On one side, there was my love for Haris, so strong and undeniable. But on the other, the reality of entering a family with such strict and, possibly, unwelcoming values weighed heavily on me. The secrecy of our relationship made me doubt the foundation we had built. Trust and honesty are cornerstones of any relationship, and ours seemed to be starting on unstable ground. I decided I needed some distance to reflect on these revelations. Those weeks apart from Harris were among the hardest I've ever faced. Filled with introspection about our future and whether love was enough to overcome these formidable obstacles. During that difficult time, I felt lower than I ever had, engulfed in a deep sadness. Yet deep down, I knew Harris was the one for me, my soulmate, and the thought of living without him was unbearable. Driven by a love that felt foolish yet undeniable, I returned to him, ready to face any challenge in life through our way together. After reconciling, we tried to devise a plan to address our unique situation, but every option seemed fraught with fear and uncertainty. Eventually, Harris and I chose a path less traveled. We decided to marry in secret, keeping it hidden from his parents. This was Harris's way of showing his commitment to me, despite the fears he harbored about his family's reaction. He concocted a story for his parents about finding a suitable girl from a good Turkai family, conveniently omitting the fact that I was black, 
and that we were already husband and wife. Our grand plan was to enjoy our secret marital bliss for a year before, unveiling the truth to his parents in Turkai, hoping against hope for a fairy tale ending. The idea was to eventually reveal our marriage, presenting it as a fait accompli if his parents refused to accept us, thereby showing Harris's deep love and willingness to stand by me, even at the cost of his reputation. You might be wondering how I agreed to such a plan. Well, Harris has a way of being incredibly convincing, and perhaps my overwhelming love for him clouded my judgment. Time indeed flies when you're lost in happiness. That first year of our secret marriage passed in a blur of joy and love. Harris never failed to express his love for me, promising that he would always choose me above all else. However, as we moved into our second year together, I started to question when we would take that significant trip to Turkey. Harris seemed to dodge the subject every time it came up, his anxiety palpable. He insisted we needed more time, believing that a longer marriage would better demonstrate our commitment to his parents. Truth be told, we were both enjoying our life together so much that we kept putting off facing the inevitable challenges that lay ahead. Our love for each other had only grown stronger, yet the shadow of the future loomed large over us. The idea of confronting Harris's parents and their potential reaction filled me with anxiety, but despite my reservations, I agreed to postpone our trip to Turkey for another year, clinging to a sliver of hope that perhaps Harris was right, that more time would smooth the path ahead of us. Thus, we carried on with our lives, deeply in love and making the most of every moment together, all while I mentally marked off the days until our impending journey. Determined to bridge the cultural gap and make a positive impression on Harris's traditionally-minded parents, I decided to immerse myself in learning Arabic. It was a daunting task, but I dove in with determination, dedicating countless hours to studying textbooks, listening to language podcasts, and practicing with Harris at every opportunity. My goal was not just to communicate, but to show my deep respect for his heritage and family. By the end of our second year of marriage, I had become nearly fluent, hopeful that this effort would demonstrate my commitment and readiness to meet his family. However, despite my efforts and growing anticipation, Harris seemed to hesitate once again. I couldn't fathom his reluctance, especially after I had invested so much into embracing his culture, learning the language, and even mastering Turkai cuisine to prove myself as a worthy partner and daughter-in-law. It was clear to me that it was time to insist on taking action. My resolve was further strengthened when I accidentally caught snippets of conversations between Harris and his parents, who were growing curious and increasingly impatient about meeting me. They expressed their eagerness to welcome Harris's wife into their family, hinting at their confusion over the delay. Harris, we've been patient enough. When will you bring her to Turkai? We're eager to meet this girl, his parents inquired, their voices a mixture of anticipation and mild frustration. Mom, Dad, I've been considering it. It's just... Harris faltered, searching for words. No more excuses, Harris. It's been too long. We're ready to meet her, and it's time she became a part of the family, they insisted, making it clear they would wait no longer. With some more gentle prodding and a final push from both sides, we began planning our trip in earnest. It took a month of meticulous arrangements, but eventually we were on our way to Turkey, ready to introduce me to Harris's family at last. The journey was a whirlwind of emotions for me. The anticipation of meeting his family, combined with the nervous excitement of finally sharing our lives openly, was overwhelming. After years of waiting and preparing, the moment of truth was upon us, and I couldn't help but feel a mix of nerves and excitement as we landed in Turkai ready to face whatever awaited us. Filled with a mixture of hope and apprehension, we landed in Turkai and made our way to Horace's family home under the cover of night. The moment we disclosed that I, Francis, was not only black but also Horace's wife, the atmosphere turned sour incredibly fast. His parents' reaction was fierce and unforgiving, their disappointment and anger echoing loudly as they berated him for his choice. Harris attempted to defend me amidst the chaos, but his efforts were swallowed by the storm of their displeasure. I stood my ground, conversing in Arabic to demonstrate my respect for their culture and my commitment to Haris, challenging their prejudices directly. However, my attempts at bridging the gap were seen as defiant rather than conciliatory. Afia and Khan, Harris's parents, couldn't hide their disdain, expressing their disapproval with harsh words that cut deep. The pain of their rejection and the racial slurs directed at me was palpable, and though I was brought to tears, I remained steadfast. 
I had harbored the hope that Horace would unequivocally choose us, affirming his commitments made in private. However, faced with his family's wrath, he seemed more inclined to appease them than to defend our union or my dignity. This was a bitter realization for me, as it appeared he was prioritizing familial peace over our relationship, leaving me feeling abandoned in the fight for our love and respect. In the aftermath, Harris and I retreated to a hotel. Our contingency plan, though the circumstances were far from what we had envisioned for celebrating our autonomy, from his family's toxicity, the night was spent in turmoil rather than in unity. With heated discussions about his lack of support, Harris confessed to being overwhelmed by the situation, arguing that my expectations had placed him in an untenable position given his deep-rooted familialities. Despite the tension and hartache, our bond, necessitated by circumstance and a shared journey, saw us reconciling swiftly. The following days in Turkey, relying on each other for support and companionship, helped mend the immediate rifts in our relationship. Upon our return to Canada, Harris expressed his inability to sever ties with his parents, citing respect and a desire to reconcile as his reasons. This decision marked the beginning of a challenging period for our marriage, shadowed by the events in Turkey. Nonetheless, Harris endeavored to reassure me of his commitment to our relationship, striving to navigate the complex dynamics between his love for me and his familial obligations. Our journey together continued, marked by resilience and the constant effort to build a future on the foundation of our shared experiences and love. Harris's consistent efforts to show his dedication to our relationship gave me hope that, in time, his family might accept us. Yet, as years passed, my patience waned. The desire to start a family grew stronger, but the ongoing tension and unresolved issues with his family made me hesitant. I expressed my concerns to Harris, but his responses were noncommittal, filled with promises that never materialized into actions. Each call from Afia and Khan was a reminder of their disapproval, urging Harris to end our relationship or berating him for tarnishing the family's reputation. I tried to convince him that some relationships, particularly those fraught with negativity and toxicity, needed to be reevaluated if not severed. However, Harris held on to the belief that reconciliation was possible, despite the evident chasm between us and his parents. Our frustrations culminated in a significant argument on my 35th birthday. I couldn't bear the thought of postponing our dreams any longer, but Harris seemed trapped between his allegiance to his family and our shared future. His hurtful words, suggesting our relationship wasn't worth jeopardizing his familial ties, struck a chord deep within me. Though he seemed to regret his outburst immediately, an apology never came. Feeling isolated and dejected, I realized I needed space to reflect and heal from the emotional turmoil. I spent a night away in a hotel, pondering over our relationship and the future I envisioned for myself, a future that seemed increasingly distant with each passing day. The hope was that Harris would reach out, ready to prioritize our relationship over his family's expectations. Slowly faded as time passed without a word from him. After weeks of reflection, I confronted the harsh reality that our relationship could not continue under the shadow of his family's disapproval and the perpetual uncertainty that enveloped us. In a decisive yet heart-wrenching move, I prepared divorce papers, leaving them in our shared home along with my engagement ring a symbol of a promise that could no longer withstand the strains of our circumstances. It was a difficult decision, driven by the realization that moving forward required letting go of the hope for a resolution that may never come. Harris's reaction to my decision was immediate and intense. He flooded my phone with messages, pleading for reconciliation and promising change. However, I remained steadfast, choosing to communicate through legal channels to ensure my emotional well-being. This decision marked the end of a chapter in my life, a step towards healing and rediscovering my own path away from the turmoil and heartache that had become all too familiar. Facing Harris again was something I couldn't do, given the depth of hurt he had caused. Despite his apologies and attempts to mend things, thinking it might lead me to reconsider, the divorce process was smoother than expected. Harris's leniency stemmed from his belief that our separation was temporary and that I would eventually return to him. However, a year post-divorce, it became evident to him that my intentions to move on were serious, causing him to realize the permanence of our split. The realization was too late. The emotional scars he left were too profound for me to overlook. In the three years that followed, I found myself at 39, 
truly living life to its fullest, exploring new relationships, and savoring a happiness I hadn't known in years. This period marked a significant transformation for me as I built a life free from the shadows of our past relationship. However, this newfound peace was abruptly disturbed. My inbox began to overflow with emails from unknown senders, a situation I initially ignored but grew increasingly suspicious of. Deep down, I feared Horace might be behind this barrage of messages. My suspicions were confirmed when he somehow acquired my new phone number, instilling a sense of fear and unease. Confronted with how he found my number, his response was chilling. Harris's accusations of my supposed selfishness and his inability to leave his family for our relationship revealed a side of him far removed from the person I once knew. His admission of having friends in high places capable of prying into my life was a stark reminder of the man he had become. A far cry from the Harris I once loved. The years without me had evidently impacted Harris deeply, affecting his mental state to the extent that he couldn't accept losing control over our relationship. His veiled threats were a stark reminder of this change. Just so you know, Francis, I can easily find out where you are and make things unpleasant for you if you push me too far, he warned ominously. What do you want, Harris? I asked, bewildered by his approach. He revealed a shocking truth. His parents were under the impression we were still married. This revelation left me stunned, especially since I had assumed his family would have been relieved by our separation. Embarrassed to admit he was the one left behind, Harris concocted a plan to maintain the facade of our unbroken marriage fearing the stigma attached to a man divorced by his wife and his culture. Harris's next move was even more surprising. He offered me money to continue pretending to be his wife for his parents, who, after a decade, were seemingly warming up to me. They planned a celebration to honor our supposed union, a situation that filled me with dread. Despite my fears of Harris's potential actions and a deep desire to sever all ties, I found myself agreeing to participate in his charade, all the while plotting my escape from this cycle of deceit. On the day of the celebration, Harris paid me in advance for my role in this elaborate lie. The event was surreal, with Afia and Khan displaying unexpected warmth towards me, their actions so at odds with their past behavior that it left me disoriented and suspicious of their motives. Their true intentions surfaced later that evening. In a private moment, they dropped the facade, making it clear their public display of acceptance was just for show. Their disdain for me hadn't changed, and their words were as cutting as ever. When the confrontation escalated and it seemed physical violence might ensue, I stood my ground, ready to expose their bigotry publicly if necessary. The situation reached a boiling point when Harris intervened, attempting to calm the storm of drama unfolding. Khan and Afia then revealed their underlying reason for the night's act, a reluctant acceptance of their son's choice to marry me driven by a desire to keep Horace in their lives despite their objections to our union. This encounter highlighted the complex dynamics of familial acceptance, manipulation, and the lengths to which individuals might go to preserve appearances, underscoring the ongoing struggle to navigate relationships bound by tradition, prejudice, and personal convictions. Afia and Khan's audacious demand that I pay off their mortgage to gain their acceptance into the family was beyond belief. Despite their wealth, they saw this as an opportunity to demean me, making it clear they viewed their approval as a commodity to be bought. Fed up with their arrogance, I knew it was time to take a stand. I revealed to them that Horace and I had been divorced for six years, and their opinion mattered little to me. The shock of this revelation left them speechless, turning their disdain towards Horace for not disclosing our separation. They accused him of bringing shame to the family, especially after relocating to Canaba to support him. Despite Harris's attempts at damage control, the damage was done. Afia and Kanzangir and embarrassment led them to storm out of the party, promising to cut ties with Harris over what they viewed as his folly. Witnessing Harris's breakdown in the chaos he'd helped create was a pivotal moment. He had spent years fearing this very scenario, and now, faced with its reality, his reaction was one of utter despair. Despite the threats he had made against me, I held one final card, a restraining order, which I revealed to him in no uncertain terms. His threats had backfired spectacularly, and I walked away from the situation with a profound sense of empowerment. After enduring so much turmoil and manipulation, the sight of Harris confronted with the consequences of his actions was, in a way, liberating. The relief, vindication, and empowerment I felt were overwhelming. And as I left him to face the aftermath alone, 
I couldn't suppress a laugh, a release of all the tension and anguish he had caused me. It was a laughter of freedom, of closing a chapter filled with pain and moving forward with my life. 